All right, here I have a wall, and I want it to look as if this wall had a mural painted on it or an advertisement or something else. You know how in old buildings you often see you fading away this old ad that used to be up there? Well, Karen created for me a little graphic here. Uh, this graphic is um, the Creative Cruiser is the name that we've dubbed my uh, vintage bus that I'm having restored that I'll eventually live in. Um, if you're not familiar with that, just on Facebook, look up Creative Cruiser and you'll see what it's talking about. Um, when it's done, it'll be painted in this fashion and so she made this illustration. What I'm going to do is take these layers that are here and I'm going to turn it into a smart object because I want this to look like one layer. Usually the blending sliders only apply to one layer. Remember it says this layer? Well, I want this to act as if this is one layer. I could merge them together, but what if I wanted to change from Creative Cruiser to Creative Live up there? You know? I want to maintain the editability of this. So I select those layers, and I'm going to turn this into a smart object. That'll look as if they've been merged together. And then I'll use my Move tool, and I'll drag this over on top of the other tab and down into this document and close the original. So if I want this to look like an old ad being applied to this wall, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Uh, one of them is to change the blending mode. The blending mode menu at the top of the layers panel determines how this layer interacts with what's underneath it. And if you're going to apply something like this, I just like to experiment and try them all and see if one of them helps. There's an interesting way to be able to cycle through them all. And what it is, is you have to be in the move tool. See the move tool over here? That's got to be active. Then just hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then press plus or minus on the keyboard. Plus will go one direction, minus would go the opposite direction up or down that list. So I won't even be looking at the menu and I'll just hold down shift and hit plus and see what do they look like and if I ever like the look, I'll glance over at the layers panel and just remember what it was. So if I like this look, it's multiply mode that gives me that. That's kind of interesting. Uh, overlay mode or soft light. Let's say I like that. Well, let's say I like that, but this feels too pristine. It doesn't look like an old one where it's fading away after decades and decades or hundreds of years of sitting there. Well, what if I were to make parts of this disappear based on how bright the bricks are? I could say make the dark parts of the brick prevent this from showing up. And then that'll make it look like it's kind of been wearing away. So what I'm going to do is go to the bottom of my layers panel, I'll click on the layers FX, go to blending options. And if I'm thinking about the bricks, the bricks are not contained on the layer that I'm working on, right? They're what's underneath. So that means I need to use the underlying layer sliders. And so let's experiment and see if the dark parts of what's underneath would be useful. If I bring this in, eventually, you see it's starting to disappear in the dark parts. So it could look like it's been rubbing away, you know, uh, wearing away where the, the grout lines are, that kind of stuff. Or I could go to the opposite side and let the bright parts of the brick, there's not, nothing that's overly bright, so I have to bring this in quite a distance but I could let it start to make it wear away, or I could do both. So let's bring this in until I start seeing it disappear. As usual, there are abrupt transitions instead of you know, slightly soft ones, so I'm going to split the slider by holding Option, and I'll experiment with where it is positioned. And maybe I'll bring in the opposite side as well until I start seeing things disappear. Split the slider. And there's a preview checkbox within this dialog box in the upper right. If I turn it off, you'll see what it looks like without the sliders. And they're a little too pristine there. Turn it back on, and you see that it's starting to look like it's a little bit wear to, worn away. And oftentimes, that's what I'll end up using to get that look. The only thing I really don't like about our end result here is I can still see a bit of the rectangle of where the edge of the graphic was. You see that? All I'm going to do there is I'm going to double click on the smart object 
in the layers panel right on the thumbnail. And it's multiple layers, just turn off that layer. Yeah. Then I'll save and close this, and now we don't have that edge. But what's nice is because I used a smart object, it still remembers the original layers that this was made out of. So at any time, I can double click on this, and I can come up here and grab my text tool and click on the text and just say Creative Live instead of Creative Cruiser, save and close. And it, unfortunately, it wasn't centered on the curve. It was flush left. But, um, and if I choose Undo, hey. <laughs> But it's nice if I do use a smart object, it acts as if those layers have been combined. So therefore, the blending sliders, which usually only work with one layer, are suddenly working with two or three. Uh, so we can get that versatility.